We'll just rock it and see where this goes. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right, everyone, welcome back. Have it all show coming at you. More personal development without the fluff. And we're bringing back a not so oldie, but definitely a goodie. Landon Porter back in the house smoking the pipe. Boom. 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 <laughs> bringing that sexy back. Are you hiding? Oh, there it is. There's the pipe. So for those of you guys that are watching audio, he is smoking like some beautiful classic pipe. A true professional. Awesome. Well, we had so much fun last time that we were like, <laughs> we got to do this again. And um, I think last time, one of the things that we left off with, and I think it was kind of the overarching theme, was how to be unapologetically you. And it's something that I think the three of us um, live and hopefully inspire others to live. So we kind of wanted to just spend some time today and explore that um, and see what comes out of our mouths. Hopefully it's not uh, too garbagey, but I feel like with these three minds, something, something wonderful will come out. So um, yeah, who wants, what'd you say? These three hearts. These three hearts. Um, yeah, I guess the, the first thing that I would say is, or, or I would ask is, there's a lot of people that feel like they would love to show up a different way, whether at work or with their friends or something. And there's this resistance to showing up, uh, whether it's cultural or pattern based or something. Um, and they're just like, Oh God, I wish I could be like Landon. Um, so what would you say to, what would you say to someone that's, um, desiring to be that and uh, resisting it in some way, shape, or form. And either one of you guys can feel this. Guest first, please. Cool. Um, what I would say is, is if, you're, if you're watching this video, right, you were probably led here for a reason. And I don't know what your religious or spiritual beliefs or ideas are, but we as a collective, as a society, as a group of animals, as a species are going through an awakening. Mm. And many of us are coming to the conclusion that I don't want to be friends with everybody. And I don't want to have to act a certain way to please somebody. Mm. I want to just be who I am, but I'm not supposed to do that. And it's kind of scary to, to do that because what if somebody doesn't like that or doesn't like me yep. and over the next coming generations are, I believe our society, our species is going to continue going through this process as we evolve and we're evolving on a spiritual plane more so than the physical and the mental. And many of us are having that thought and that feeling of, I want to be like that person. I want to be like that. And what we're actually thinking and feeling is, is I want to be feeling like that, like what that appears to be for me. Um, and most of us really, if we could just express who the fuck we actually are, would feel so much better because we'd get to take off this mask that I believe, like Elon said a minute ago is there is some, we were trained to be like this. We were taught to not be like that. We were conditioned to think this way. And a lot of us are at the point where we're like, I don't really care. It's too much work. It's too much headache and it's too much stress to continue trying to make other people like me that it might just be okay to just be me and deal with the fact that some people aren't going to like that. Yeah. I think the resistance to that is a fear, right? Oh my God, they might not like me. The faster we can get over that and be okay with it because some people aren't going to like that. Yeah. The faster you can feel free. And I think ultimately that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Broski, you want to add something? Sure. Always. Um, you know, for me, it's like, we can look at, um, we can look at like logical individuals, like, um, so what I'm looking for here individualization that's a word yeah yep. so we can look at like log logical individualization we can look at spiritual individualization i think those two things would actually be defined quite separately so kind of to, to landon's point right if you look at 60 70 years ago stepford wives uh that kind of mentality everyone's kind of wearing a suit 
um, certainly the uh, educational system from the Rockefellers that only started at the turn of the 19th century was all about removing individualization and popping out people who think the same, think, you know, think the same, look the same, act the same. Um, and that has rippled, in my opinion, through society to produce a certain thing. And then there's this funny dissonance where we kind of like seek individualization, but that's where that fear comes from. That dissonance is, well, I've been conditioned that I'm supposed to be like everybody else. So who am I to go and express myself in an individualistic way that would somehow rock this boat? Mm. Right. And it's kind of what we're at ahead of, uh, what we're heading to or like dealing with today, which is like all the school systems, you know, we want to clearly not working anymore, clearly not even preparing people for the world that we live in today. Um, and I think part of what we get to see is not just like the spiritual revolution, but of course, like the arts that are coming with it and everything that goes along with creating individualization in a way where we get to embrace it as the whole versus like fighting because I think right now what we are seeing is like the older generation that's more religious than spiritual perhaps right um, we were just talking about this on a previous podcast something that came into my consciousness I'm, I'm listening to um, Ken Wilber's The Religion of Tomorrow fucking amazing if there's somebody who's got a freaking clue and nobody has a freaking clue but if somebody has a clue about what the hell is going on maybe more than anybody I've ever read before and he has this really great uh, distinction that he makes about like the Western ideology of religion and how it was turned away from mystical, like mystical experiences. Cause like during the Spanish inquisition, apparently what that was, was reigning in mystical experiences because the church can't control mysticism. They can't control what kind of mystical shit you're experiencing and how you're experiencing yourself at different levels of consciousness. What they can control though is a certain dogma that instead of having you wake up as you grow up, and if you look at religion, what it's been, it's all, it's been like, here's how we're going to define these rules about how you're supposed to grow up. No sex, no this, no that, right? And if there's any revolution that's coming in spirituality is the connection between our sexual energy and our logical minds, which has been like this giant, you know, giant cavern right now between those two things. We have so much sexual shame, but like all your power, your manifestation, your ability to receive, everything comes from that energy source, right? So that's your root chakra. Everything comes from the root, just like it does in everything in nature. And then he talks about Eastern philosophy, which is like their methodology has been about waking up. But the two have never been connected. There's never been like a spiritual practice that's trying to connect both worlds. And so it's like we get to make this turn right now, spiritually speaking, and, and 5% of the planet apparently already has. And I'm hoping we're part of that 5% where those two worlds are starting to connect and merging and those are the people kind of leading the way for everybody else something else that made me really really hopeful in, in listening to that book is he shows scientific evidence that as these turns have happened spiritually in society it happens at about 10 percent of society being at that state so, so this is integral theory so when 10 percent integrates that level of consciousness of frequency then everybody it propagates really really quickly so that he says that at, this he wrote the book in 2015 that 5% of the population is currently integrated this way within the decade, 10% will be. Wow. So we're talking, we're talking before, before or at 2025, you're going to have this integration that starts, you know, moving this bubble out, which transfers so quickly. And plus you are going to see, like, I think this will probably be the last president, hopefully, or, or these, this political cycle where it ends this whole ideology of people who are, and I'm not mad. I just under, I just see their plight which is they've known a conservative type of mindset their entire life. Change was not what they learned. It wasn't just what they learned in school. It's what they learned in all of life. And now everything's changing so fast. They're going to try to hang on to their dying breath to make everything the same because that's safety for them. Yeah. So we can either fight or we can just start empathizing and, and be like, oh my God, like I see how much pain you're in. And how do we even invite that kind of psychology and that kind of emotional body and say, hey, it's okay. Like you're going to be safe. We're going to take care of you instead of go fuck yourself. Yeah. So we'll see well, what happens. Well, one of the things that both of you guys were sharing that kind of came through was, you know, if, if you kind of boil it down to why people want to be something right at the end of the day, it's, we're all these little kids seeking love and acceptance, right? Just like we sought love and acceptance from our parents. If you didn't get it from one or you didn't get it from the other or, you know, maybe you didn't have parents or you didn't get it from both, right? Like our entire lives are formulated around, I just want people to love me. And so we create all these personas and we put on all these masks with the intention of, if you boil it down, to receive love and acceptance from those around us. 
and we create those masks and perception based off of, listen to how crazy this is, based off of what we believe the other person would love. Not necessarily what the other person loves, what we've formulated through God knows what process we do this instantaneously, right? Like I need to show up this way so John can like me, or I need to show up this way so Mary can like me. And if you think about that for a second, you're like, the reason we don't want to show our true colors is because we've made up some sort of perception, some sort of belief, some sort of story that if we were to show up naked, then everyone would leave me. I would no longer receive their love and I would no longer receive their acceptance. And so here's what I want to offer you. And I'm sure you guys have a bunch to say about this as well. Do little experiments, you know, like something we do with our clients is like, you don't need to tackle the entire mountain. You don't need to reprogram who you are and just come out there and all that stuff. Like there's a lot of fear in stepping out. What we have found, and I'm sure what you've found is like the scars, the idiosyncrasies, the little things that you do that your friends love in you, whether you know it or not, are what make you super, super unique. And especially when you become a more like thought leader type public figure, you know, you, you try to paint yourself as, oh, I need to show up this way because this is how everybody else shows up. And they wear these blue suits with these red ties. So I should do the same because that's what people obviously accept, right? And like we make up all this nonsense because if someone knew that I was living on a couch in my mom's basement while being here, they wouldn't love me or talk to me. Or if I got arrested and went to jail three years ago, that I'm somehow less than that person. And you know what I think people love more than anything else is people that don't give a fuck, not don't give a fuck about other people, but don't give a fuck about what other people think about them. We find it sexy. We look at them. We're like, wow, how do they do? How do they just show up in this room and just be themselves and not care what this person is thinking or that person is thinking or this person. So like, just run little experiments because what's happened is you've programmed so deep into your operational system, like the operating system of a human being that if I do this, people will run away. That's literally the story. There's some sort of version of it that you've created. Test it as an adult. Now test it because that story was created when you were five or six or seven years old, test it, go to someone and share something that you wouldn't normally share lead with something that you wouldn't normally lead. Here's what I promise you, because this happens 10 out of 10 times with every single person that's ever done this. They will want to connect with you more. In fact, they'll be like, wow, this is the most you I've ever seen. You being this vulnerable and beautiful, like they'll, they'll share their amazing story with you. And you're like, wow, this is the most connected I've ever been with you. And these little things just start to reprogram that like really, really old program. And it goes, oh, wow. You know, it's not deathly scary when I do this and, and people don't run away. In fact, people are drawn more to me and I receive more clients and I receive more abundance and I receive more love and all of it. And that's when the circuitry literally starts busting up and you just start living from that place. It, I don't think anyone's born with this like, fuck you attitude. We all went through the, you know, I, I really did seek acceptance and love and I had to be this way and blah, blah, blah. And then eventually you just go through this process. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. The most interesting aspect of this is it's way more simple than most of us make it, right? right? Yes, there's lots of little things that we can do and need to do and whatever, but here's what it comes down to. And this is when people get this, this is like the fucking aha moment. Relationships are the most important thing on the planet but the one that you have with yourself is the most important because when you have that connection to your own power, Amen. that's source. And when you're leading from that, you are nothing but who you are. And that's when it's not that I don't give a fuck about other people. It's I don't really give a fuck what they think. Why? Because what's most important is, is what do I think about myself? Yes. That's the most important because if I'm good with that, those who matter don't mind. And those who mind can go jump off a cliff, <laughs> right? Like seriously, I mean, it's, so it's, so, it's so interesting talking about this, 
this piece, these little experiments that you can do, like, ooh, what if you didn't wear that suit to the office today, right? What if it was untucked a little bit yeah. and somebody said something? Cool. Wear the most incredibly ridiculous outfit you can think of that you're going to be embarrassed by and go be out in public and just fucking deal with it. Yeah. Be okay with it. It's so weird. Yeah. But that's where we're headed as, as a collective is I am perfect just how I am. And like everybody else, I'm growing and expanding and learning. But what other people think about me is not as important as what I think about myself. Yeah. So true. And certainly no two souls came here for the same thing. Um, you really, yeah. And I think it all, you know, I'll parlay this, but it all starts with what, what you're willing to accept about yourself. Right. And what you get to accept is everything. So like the darkest parts, the shadowy parts. And in fact, like it, it's not only just accepting, it's embracing, loving, bringing them in. Um, everything, the best healing experiences I've ever, ever had are the ones where everything integrates. Right. So I think personal development, we're, again, we are just talking about this have, as a whole has been kind of this direction of it's an empowerment movement. So empowerment tells you I'll be so powerful that I won't have to experience this anymore. And that's the nonsense, nonsense. The, the most gifted spiritually person on the planet, Jesus, Buddha, whatever, whatever, integrated everything as part of the whole. It's why they could be a being of love because they loved everything about self. You can't fill somebody else's cup until your cup is full. There's case study after case study these days um this will be kind of funny to talk about but like <clears throat> where they'll take um people who are massively homophobic like you know religious zealots and stuff like that and they'll show them homo erotica and they'll actually test who's getting more aroused and the people who get most aroused are the ones who are most opposed to it wow I mean, probably most of the christian faith probably has some pretty homo tendency the uh, homosexual tendencies right and we see this in politics all the time those who talk about uh people cheating on their wives are the ones doing it those are people who are most upset about um what whatever it's called about abortion and you know about homosexuals getting married are the ones who are often caught doing that shit you know privately and it's that and it's and it's they're doing it because they're personally shaming themselves mm -hmm. so the programming is shame everybody right and don't be found out in that shame and you're going to do everything. So those are some extravagant, you know, kind of examples. Point is, is that we're all doing that at every single level. Anything mm -hmm. you can accept is where you're going to be blaming, shaming other people. And, it, and, and that should be the, <gasps> wow, I'm really fucking pissed off about this, that people are doing this. This is a moment to get curious about self. It's like, wow, where am I shaming myself? Where don't I have room for that? And every single time I've gone in and said to myself, well, oh yeah, I've done that. Oh man, I just did that yesterday. Um, or wow. And I really got on myself about that. You know, um, if for me, that's always where the, where the core works happen. The, actually the biggest shifts in my life have been where I've been able to catch myself. It's amazing how the mechanism works to hide that from your view. And, and it's not even that it's hiding it. It's, 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 um, it's white noise. It's white energy. It's been happening for so long. You just don't even focus on it anymore, but it's right there all the time. It's that feeling in your body, that uncomfortable feeling that's in there all the time. It, you've just, it's been happening for so long. You've learned to live with it. Um, so it's going back in there, getting really present with the body. This is why I go, moving from the gross body to the subtle body was really for me the first st st stage of actual enlightenment for people um, is like notice that there is stuff happening in your body. Yes, you're disappointed. Yes, you're sad. Yes, yes, you're all these negative things that are only negative because we put negative language constructs around them and you get to experience all these things integrated as part of the whole, magic will absolutely fucking happen when you do that. Yeah. Landon, you want to say something? I have a question that this is going to be interesting. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you guys have been asked this question this directly before. You guys are both very into personal development and like what it is and what it means and why it's important and all that. And we all know that all of the people outside of us and the experience is a mirror for what we're currently feeling and dealing with internally. Right. My question is, and I'm curious, why are you both so interested in leading the charge on this personal development front? Like what is it internally? Why do you guys do that? That is such a great question. And here's what I, this is like the first thing I want to say is I would love to say that my last answer 
is how it was the entire time. And that would be complete and utter bullshit. I think my experience of why has shifted many, many, many times. I can tell you that the first thing and this, you know, like this is actually one of those things that I was afraid to say for a long, long time because I thought people would judge me. And I'm going to say development phobic. <laughs> um, Highly aroused by the personal development phobic. Yeah. yeah. Um, when, ever since I was a really, really young kid, like five, six or seven years old, I had a knowing, not a belief, a knowing that I was put on this earth, this lifetime to cause a revolution. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know. Again, I was really young. It was like programmed in me. I just knew I was here to do something huge. I had no idea what it was, right? So it was when I was 21 years old, um, I, I took the Landmark Forum and I saw what this Landmark Forum leader did in front of the room. And at the end of the day, it was like Sunday and you get to basically create in their, in their language, you know, the possibility that I'm inventing for myself in my life is, and I created the possibility of being a Landmark Forum leader. Because what I saw this man do for 120 people's lives in three days was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen any human being do. Like to give people that experience of themselves, of love, of uh, fulfillment, of joy, of health and well-being. Like it, it rocked my world. And it was the first time where I was like, woo, this is what I was put on this earth to do. And... Since that time, so that was kind of like when the piece finally came together and I was like, you know, this is it. Since that time, I, you know, I can honestly say like when I started doing it, there was a lot of different levels. You know, the first time I had a coaching call with someone or I, I did some coaching with someone and I saw that look in their eyes where they're like, you could just see like the wheels like coming to a screeching halt and starting to go in a different direction. You just see it behind their head, uh, behind their eyes. I got addicted like full on drug style addicted to creating that feeling for someone, right? So it stopped being this pure thing. It was more like, ooh, look what I can do for people. And then I got to like do one of these, like, ooh, I'm so good. And as I've gone through this, you know, I was, I was really young. Um, and I, as I've developed through this process, kind of what we're talking about here, I think religion or anything personal development, when you first start, you believe that you've found the greatest thing since sliced bread, whatever that is, whether it's religion or a pasana or a drug, or, it doesn't matter. Like your first awakening, you go and shout it from the roof, everyone needs to do this, this is the greatest thing ever. And then it takes you a couple of years, three, four, I don't know, for it to kind of like sink from your head into your heart and you realize this is not about anybody else. This is my journey, pure and simple, my journey. Now, what we've realized, putting all this kind of stuff together, is Guy and I have this ability to go through processes and share those processes with people in such a way where it makes a difference. That's why, you know, after we were telling you, Landon, like after the call, personal development without the fluff. I don't care to sound smart. I don't care to be like the guy that sits there and is like, oh, you know, you, I don't give a shit about any of that. I just know that certain stuff makes a huge and profound difference in the way that you get to live your life with your family, with your kids, with your spouse, with your boyfriend, girlfriend, and parents. And that's important to me. And so now we've kind of gone from this place where it's like, you know, do I get to work with you? Do I get to work with you? Like this, like flashlight in the dark type of thing. I know we spoke about this last time to just look, I'm a beacon of light. And those that are attracted to that frequency, to that light naturally come into my space. Just like I attract amazing people to, to work with, um, both as like, I hire them. That's just what happens. So now you know, and again, I'm sure it'll evolve. Like, you know, ask me five years from now, I'm sure it'll be something else. But like for me, for now, it really is about this idea that we are part of something, not like 
it's us doing it. Like we are a part of this huge awakening movement that is happening on planet earth at this moment. And we are just one of these lights in a multiverse of many, many, many lights. And I don't give a shit how this gets done. One of our mentors early on said like, if I could find a burger stand where you eat this burger and you receive this kind of transformation, you bet your fucking ass I'll be standing on the corner selling those burgers. And I'll tell you the same exact thing. For now, this is the best way I know how. And I'm always interested in exploring and learning. And like the fulfillment, I just know in my body that this is what I'm meant to do. The experience of it alters all the time, but like the knowing, the feeling like that just goes inside and it's like, yes, Elon, yes, just keep doing this. Yes, perfect. Yes, that's exactly what we need you to do. That feeling has never gone away. I have this kind of funny thought right now while you were talking that I don't think it ever really occurred to me before that eventually we're going to synthesize spirituality. We're going to turn it into a pill or we're going to turn it into a VR experience. Something that will be so, maybe it's AI and the singularity coming online and just having so much grasp and knowledge over a single human at one time that it's like, okay, we just have to show you this light in this direction, this sound, and the brain just like, right, and wakes up. And that will happen probably, maybe within the next decade or two. Um, I mean, I, I think with those, um, you know, he talks about in Stealing Fire, but like, you know, what, where they basically scan someone's brain activity Sure. And then you could put it on and the idea would be that like, Oh, I see you putting it on would fire the same things in your, so like imagine, uh, um, a meditating guru, right? right like someone that's been yeah. sitting meditating for 40 you're years sure, you're sharing frequency and you get to have that experience yeah. or you get to have an enlightenment experience of someone going through that. Like, sure. That'll change you. So here, here's why I want to laugh about it because, um, like Landon, do you drive a manual car by any chance? You look like the kind of guy who would drive a manual. Actually, I've got an automatic right now. You do, but I've have you, I, like, you've driven a manual. I drive, and I love I love a manual. Yeah, cool. So anybody who's driven a manual, like you, appreciate a car in a way that somebody who's driven an automatic their whole life just just can't, right? And mm -hmm. it's not knocking anybody, but there's so a lot of things you got get to pay attention to in in the manual world, the RPMs, the sound the engine's making. There's it's just a much more integrative feeling where I actually feel I don't know the soul of a car when I drive an automatic, like it's a soulless vehicle but I've always had a manual. So 17 years, I always drive a manual. And my point is, is that like, I wonder if we'll be sitting here 20 years from now when they synthesize it and they give someone a pill and they're waking, I'm sure we'll all be like, this is awesome, but it will lose that essence of having, having to had awaken yourself. Mm -hmm. And I wonder like, will I appreciate the awakening of the human race when it's just a given versus the work that we've had to put in over time? Cause it'll be like driving a manual versus driving an automatic or learning to spin as a DJ with records versus learning to spin as a DJ now where everything is digitized. There, there is something that digit, digitization autom automation takes away from that more visceral experience. And we'll be like the old grandpappies sitting in like our little rocking chairs going, smoking our remember, pipes. Remember when you had to meditate uh, three hours a day to get this shit? You know, like <laughs> that'll uh -huh. gonna be like those young worker snappers with their synthesized spirituality. Fuck them. You know, like, um, so, uh, yeah, I, and I, so I wonder if like, the ex that's what I was laughing about. I wonder if the experience will always be this way or we will hack this. Because I imagine if there's going to be a mass awakening on the planet, it has to be hacked. I think it will be hacked, like like most of the other things that we are playing with. And let me let me use an analogy. It's kind of like um, driving a manual versus driving an automatic is like making love with a partner versus masturbation, right? It's there's that much of a separation between the same end result, A to B where spirituality and, and going through these processes, I think as we generationally, the planet evolves, my kids were born with a totally different knowing, internalized in their DNA skill set, information wise mm -hmm. than we were. And I think we were, because that's how it, it goes. I think the synthesizing of it and the hacking of it will be a thing like VR. I mean, right. 20 years ago, you could get on the internet and go to a website for porn. 20 years before that, you had to get a magazine or a VHS. 20 years before, and that's where we're headed, right? 
it will never replace the the awesomeness of going through that process yourself and that's the divide and that's that's one of the downfalls of our race is we want i want the fucking result now without the work right cool you got the result doesn't mean much to you does it yeah right yeah there's something someone said to me that was really interesting um there's, I mean, we all notice like different generational things. And I think we're even highlighting here and Landon, I know you're a dad. So like, I'd love to speak on this, but you know, not our parents necessarily because different parents, different ages, et cetera. Let's go like grandparents, right? So like people kind of in like their seventies, eighties, et cetera. What we're talking about to the majority of those people is so foreign, right? Like they've constructed a world that was based on certain ideas and beliefs and perspectives. So then our generations, I'm talking like people kind of like in the thirties, forties, right? Like our souls come down and it almost, the way she said it, it's like, it almost feels like we had to lay waste in a way to what's happened before, like that previous generation, Mm -hmm. because the new children coming, the new souls, these things that, you know, these beings that people are calling star children are to guys point, I believe have this programming internally. Mm -hmm. I do believe that, you know, like I, I mean, I'm just looking at my kids and, and kids who are their friends. There is no fucking way that we were even close to being this developed on so many different levels than these kids are just naturally gravitating to and born to. So it's almost like if you notice even what's happening in every country, Trump is not like a one off thing. It is literally happening in every country because that old thinking is by the last grasps, like they will do anything to just like hold on to that. Like, oh, we can't let go of this. These kids are crazy. Right. And then we're coming in and we're kind of like the intermediary where we're going nah, that, that shit doesn't work. Like it's time maybe to like try something a little bit different. And then these kids, like you said, are coming in with these different programs and different knowings to parents like us, not everyone, but like, you know, conscious parents, awakened parents who see the divine in these children and want to enhance the divine in these children and really see them as like, I, I personally believe the work that Guy and I are doing in Satori Prime is purely so like that my kids and hopefully Guy's kids in the, in the future can take this torch somehow and turn it into something that he and I can't even think or fathom mm-hmm. right now with their abilities. And that to me is what feels like is happening. And this, you know, it's just happening really, really fast and it's scaring the shit out of people in a big, big way. And they're like, this is not going to change. You know, like just stop this change. And we're like, speed that shit up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. One of you, and I don't don't remember which one of you said this on this conversation. We're like beacons, right? We're, we're like the bridge generation. Those of us in our, and, and I do consider myself and I will own this as awakened, enlightened, right? It's not something that is just totally second nature. I have to work at it. Yeah. My kids won't have to work at it near as hard because they're that much further ahead. Whereas my parents, are you fucking kidding? Like one of them can't even comprehend it still. And the other one was like, the reason that I can do it is because that parent of mine was like that. Mm. Um, We, our generation, thirties and forties, and some of the people that are in their fifties and some of the, some of the people that are in their late twenties were acting as guides yeah. for the people coming behind us so they can stand on our shoulders, right? We're standing, looking over the wall. They're going to stand on our shoulders and jump over it. Yeah. And I think, um, here's a really interesting example. When I was a kid, I couldn't wait to drive. Couldn't fucking wait yeah. because it meant my ability to go here and there and right connect with other people my kids could give a shit like they don't care like they don't care because that doesn't mean the same thing to them right their kids aren't going to have vehicles like we know it right 
their kids are going to have the opportunity to go visit Mars and, you know, go to the moon for the weekend and right shit that we can't even really comprehend on a spiritual level. It's kind of the same thing. It's our species is, and you said something a minute ago, Elon, about, um, I get it. And so this other person gets it and then it continues to spread, which was a take on what guy said a, f- a few minutes before that we're like a bacteria, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden there was something dropped in the water and a couple of us begin to change and then more of us change and then more of us change. It acts like that. Yeah. And from a spiritual and a, a personal development place, it only takes a certain percentage of us to be open to that, to where now it's like commonly accepted in the collective consciousness to where then we make that leap. And I think that happens genetically as well. Like we're talking with our kids. Yeah. I think they're coming in a little bit higher programmed than we are. It's like, yeah. you know, Terminator, right? The newer versions, they've got more software. Big time. Yeah. I love this. Um, you guys just gave me a little bit of an insight of appreciation for our parents, right? Cause you look at what every generation, every generation synthesized something. Our parents' generation were the bridge where we stopped having to survive. Yep. Because all the generations before that life was just, just survive. That's why like you, you just got the job, whatever job you could get just to put three square meals on the table. That was the conversation planet wide. There was wars that threatened your survival. There was nuclear waste that could threaten your survival. And still all that stuff's going on now. But at that time that was all new. They didn't even have concepts of what those things possibly were. We, we grew up in a world where those concepts were really well, well developed and we've been around conversations that are really well developed. But it's like, I've never had to deal with the, like my life is threat because I don't have food in my mouth. Right. Certainly, right? And then like this generation stops survival and then raise these kids that seem to be what at least people are perceiving are entitled. But it's like, yeah, they're, guess what? They didn't grow up in a world where survival was at the forefront of their minds and you're going to make them wrong for that, right? Like you want it to be better for your kids. It's better for your kids. Now let's make them wrong for that. It's like, whatever. Okay, well, that that lack of survival is creating another opportunity. And I don't want to say it's a challenge, literally another opportunity for like, they have to deal with life and the challenges that it's going to pose in a completely different way than, this, than the generation before them. It doesn't mean that they're any less challenged, certainly not spiritually, right? So it's like you came with that programming and now we have to deal with it and now we're synthesizing this and we're synthesizing that. So it, it's, it's the natural order of things. I think the awakening state is a given. Just mm-hmm. look at yourself and if you're the micro of the macro, you, every night you fall asleep, there's a different experience that's happening. Every day you wake up, there's a different experience that's happening. We're doing that on the whole. Certainly this is not the first enlightenment period that's happened on this planet. It's happened before which means we, we will enlighten and we'll eventually choose to fall asleep again or certain methodologies will fall out or certain things will be forgotten once again. It, it's like the whole can't keep it. I, I think we, the opportunity today is maybe more than ever, or maybe this has happened in the past too, is te- technology grew with spirituality so that the ideas that are being synthesized by the spiritual community could then be distributed in a way that works for the, for the whole. And I think th- it, we have to have technology to do that. It doesn't matter if Jesus is waking up in Nazareth over there doing his thing thing. There's millions of people all over the planet that are, can't get to that message, certainly can't feel that frequency or have those experiences. But guess what? Today we can. And there are technologies coming online that are going to make that way easier. Like we said, VR, we can't even imagine where that's going to go or just hooking electrodes to the brain and, and causing certain stimulus in the body that just causes natural awakening. So I think it's stupid to judge any anybody like again if we're here to integrate the whole and accept all things then even looking at donald trump look at the little boy like how much of that is derived out of fear every fucking decision like imagine his internal state yeah if he came to you as a student and he's like i'm fucked up i need help right but i think what was you know i started this conversation saying by like growing up or waking up each one of those platforms is going to create a certain type of thing so you can have really smart people like german doctors in world war ii who are brilliant but have no morals and could do the evil fucking things that they did. You can have super spiritually enlightened people that are enlightened. They're in the unification. They're in the oneness, right? They're, they get all the void. They, they live that experience. And yet they have homophobia, xenophobia, because they've never, they've never grown up. And, and it's, it's even judging those people. Like, oh, you're spiritual? You should, you should have integrity then. It's nonsense. It's nonsense, right? So, like, we get we get to look at everybody, and this has been my practice for the last few years, and certainly I feel like I, I've grown a lot into it, and I can't say that I'm sitting around here not judging fucking anybody, because certainly I'm still judging myself, so I don't want to make it seem like I'm, I'm some fucking guru. I'm not. I, 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 and suddenly, I even this year, 
there's been an explosion of growth in the way that I've never experienced before. Um, there's people around me suddenly that I'm just like, you are the most mystical, magical being. Thank you. You've given me a keystone of what I've been looking for for 30 years. And, and it's just a feeling in my body. That's just like the amount of experiences I've had over the last two weeks. I could not be more grateful. And it's just opening up the, the next, the next part of it. So again, like I remember when Trump got, got into office and everyone lost their fucking minds. And the first thing I did was make a video about why, about why this was the most amazing thing that could ever happen on the planet. Because it, 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 if you're looking for change, maybe it's not what it's, you thought it was going to look like, but there it is. And if you look at what's happening with governments around the planet right now, if you look at what's happening with private citizens who are suddenly becoming massively philanthropic and saying, hey, I'll take care of that, no problem. Because for the first time in, in a long time, we have so much wealth on this planet that the, the government, the power that governments had because of their wealth, suddenly individuals on this planet have, and if they're, in, and if they're inclined to and enlightened, will take care of those problems for us. Yeah. It's happening, Elon Musk is doing it, Bill Gates is doing it, like, um, you know, whatever, that, that whole thing with, um, Jesus, what's a really wealthy guy out in Nebraska? Help me. Buffett. Yeah, and, and all he's doing with, like, you know, handing out, like, 99% of your wealth away and, and everybody there. So I look at the future. I'm like, this shit's real bright. It's a given. We're going to be enlightened. All you get to do is just keep being here. Keep doing your inner work. Don't even worry about anybody else. Whatever you see outside that you can't accept, learn to love anyway. See the best in what's happening. Um, I hope I'm not just being an uh, idiotic optimist and that the frequency I feel in my body is truth is letting me know that there's nothing any of us need to worry about. We're so taken care of. Just keep moving forward. You know, as you're talking, you made me uh, realize something. Because there, there are parents that, that we train and coach. And a lot of the, the stigma of this younger generation is that they're entitled little shits, right? They're not doing anything. All they want to do is like sit and come up with like, app ideas and they don't want to work and all this stuff. They said and the same thing about us when we were kids. I remember when 9-11 happened and they're like, these teenagers don't do anything. And suddenly the teenagers are out there giving blood and taking care of things and all that stuff. So same conversation. Yeah. Well, what's really interesting is like the world even today is so different than it was even 10 years ago. 10 years ago from today will be like we had lived 40 years. Like it's just moving at such a pace. And it's interesting because what we're trying to instill in these children or what we want to instill in these, this new generation is skills that have quote unquote helped us be successful, right? Helped us survive. What if they already came with the programming and the skills that they need for the world that we haven't even prepared for yet? Cause if you think about like, who are the richest people uh, right now? Like the young rich people, they're not out there building uh, mining companies or you know tire factories. They're the people creating apps. They're the people solving like worldwide global issues. Maybe some of them are not necessarily issues, but like you t you look at some of the biggest com it's connection, right? It's like you were saying, you know, kids don't want to drive. Why? Because Uber is like the easiest thing on planet Earth right now add to that automated vehicles and you've solved the entire like transportation thing system. Um, Airbnb have a bed in any fucking place you want from, from accessibility of your phone, uh, Facebook connection on the planet, Snapchat, like all of these things that are just solving problems that older generations minds, there weren't even problems. Mm -hmm. And so it's just interesting to think like maybe we don't know any better. And instead of like instilling them with all of these programs that we have, because we believe that's what's going to make you better, we just got to look at them and go like, what is it about them that is evolved? This question. Yeah. What is it that we have to do? What is it that we are responsible for? Every one of us. Uh, simple answer is self. Correct. Yeah. So if first we're responsible for ourselves and we can create an ecosystem within our own life that we love to the point where our cup is full and then we can begin helping others fill their cup, right? What if 
these newer, younger beings have shown up with their cup full and they're able to beyond what we can even imagine as problems, solve those things, right? We can't even see it and understand it. Yeah. It's like me banging on my kids about their grades. Yeah. yeah. 10 fucking years. That shit ain't going to matter at all. At nope. all. Right. At all. Especially the shit that they're learning at schools today. You know, you were saying that and I'm like the one answer. So guys said self, like the, for me, it's love. Like I, th I think ultimately as a human race, everything that, that I strive to deliver is like, if you can love that person and that person and that person and that person, regardless of their race, age, skin color, gender, transgender, whatever, alien, right? Like you can love on that person the same way that you love on yourself. We have reached a level of enlightenment and we can kind of like move on to whatever else, you know, it, it, level two <laughs> of wherever this, this, this whole thing is going. So for me, it's like, what does that get to look like? And that's to me like the unanswerable question, because again, what we're dealing with now is not what we're going to be dealing with five years from now or fucking 50 years from now. And these kids like even notice what's happening. I watch the Oscars, which I never, never watch the Oscars, but because of this whole like me too thing, I have to tell you, I was fucking moved, right? Like, and maybe some people think it was like over the top and blah, blah, blah. I love the fact that women are standing up for themselves in that world because you know what? It's public. And it gives other women the accessibility to stand up for that. And there was so much stuff there about like, this is the first woman ever in this category. And, and Frances McDermott did this beautiful thing where she asked like all the women who were nominated to stand in this room. And she's like, you know, 50 years ago, this wouldn't have happened. So there is this, I think this new generation, look what's happening with like transgender and, to, you know, like toilets at schools. The, who's getting pissed off? Not the kids in the school. Sure. Way more empathy. Right? Like, they're like, who gives a shit? Kid, not kid. I don't care. Like, I love you. You know, you're great. Look what's, and, happening, and, look what's happening in Florida right now. I mean, those, those, yeah. kids sound, sound the way, those kids sound the way that you want the politicians to sound when they're standing at a podium, saying it's, the things that, that those people should be saying. Could and be it's saying. the first time because kids stood up and when everyone was like, oh, you're just kids and shut the fuck up, they were like, we're just going to get louder. Well, those are the future consumers for those companies. <laughs> so you piss them off now, you lost consumer for life. And, but that's, you know, that's the power we do yield when we're using our voices authentically. And that's really beautiful. Um, look, this, this, this conversation is great. I think we keep, we, we get just like with yourself, what do you got to do? Just get the fuck out of the way. Mm. Just, just keep getting the fuck out of the way with your kids. What do you do? You're just getting in the way. And the only reason you're getting in the way is because you think you own this thing. You've been taught that you have that it's supposed to be obedient to you because child rearing a hundred years ago said break your child and so mm -hmm. then your parents carried that on and tried to break you so you were an obedient little kid but it's like hey people humans are not designed for obedience there's this idea that we're supposed to be led no we're supposed to be self governed mm -hmm. not by government but because of ourselves but when you're out of alignment there's so many wacky things that happen psychosomatically and emotionally to the human body that that detach you from where all the information and love that you can be getting internally actually come from that then you have to go to an external source say please leave me please feed me please this to me please that to me because your 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 system is literally freaking out yeah so you know with <laughs> this is funny but like there's so much magic happening in our lives today that i don't understand how it's happening I just, I just know it works. I don't know how, why, I don't even care to explain it. What I know is that every time I, whatever we're defining as emotional also gets to be redefined. Cert, certainly as a man, because for me, like one of the, the stagnant points about becoming emotional was that like showing sadness, like I had to cry and weep and all these things. And every way, every part along my spiritual path, I realized I'm like, oh, you idiot. You're just trying to make it look like somebody else. Mm. Like, what if guy just gets emotional the way guy gets emotional? When I get sad, I don't have to have streams flowing down my face, but like I feel deeply in my system. But if I'm feeling deeply in my system at the same time, I'm like, I'm sad, but I'm not crying. I start making myself wrong about the fact that I'm not crying. I leave my system. I'm not in there anymore. And, and this is the thing, there's like this uniqueness, the spiritual uniqueness I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. is you get to show up 
however it is that you get to show up and just because someone laughs a certain way cries a certain way does this a certain way if you're trying to replicate that you're actually missing your own truth i, th I think the, the the last personal development generation was all about creating certain rules but again it was a, it was like a growing up type of conversation here's how you grow up spiritually but it was like but it looked a certain way even when i got to san diego and like I was really excited about the conscious community here i'm like uh like this shit's a little bit dogmatic i'm like i don't need to wear a fucking furry vest and linen pants to show that i'm spiritual okay like if, that, if that's how you get down this you get down but it's like i don't want to show up to this party and have it like this is what spirituality looks like spirituality looks like however it fucking chooses to look like a torn tank top a fucking tattoo across your face i don't care anymore. i just don't care anymore so it's like it's like let's stop creating structures and defining things it's fine to do it for the short run but it, it starts causing harm when we get attached to it in the long run as if we found the truth. The truth is evolving forever and will continue to do so. So, again, come back to what I said before. It's just get the fuck out of the way. Stop, stop thinking that you have ownership over anything in the world. Like anything that you feel like you have ownership over in the short or long run is going to create upset for you. And, and it, it is a shift that we get to make where we just see that like this is a borrowed body. These are borrowed children. That's a borrowed dog. This is a borrowed intelligence. Nothing is yours. And it's, it all belongs part to the whole. And I think if we can make that turn, we're going to see some really beautiful things on this planet happen. Oh, look, your consciousness, conscious of yourself. Holy shit balls. <laughs> uh, so fun. <laughs> I'm, 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 much more, I'm much more interested in what people have embodied. I, I actually don't care that much about intellect anymore. I'm impressed by intellect. Don't get me wrong. I even like throwing it around once in a while, right? And being like, oh, look what I can do. That's my intellect, right? I like doing it though, knowing that we're moving, we're, we've, we've, we're making the turn from an egocentric model to a eco-centric model. And eco also means like living in harmony with nature and all these other things that we get to do right now. So it's like, it'll be, I'm so excited like for these next five years because I feel like there's been so much work done since the sixties to wake up the human mind. And we're suddenly hitting, that's the feel body. It's like, Oh, here it comes. Mm -hmm. This is going to be fucking exciting. And, it, and, it, and it's going to be just like Trump. It's not going to look the way any of us think that it will. Maybe it's Galactus coming out of the fucking sky. I don't know. Maybe it's everyone getting an injection shot of ayahuasca. I don't know. I just know that I'm, I'm so happy that I'm alive at this period of time that whether we destroy ourselves or whether we hit an enlightenment golden period, what a fucking awesome time to be alive. Yeah, definitely. Uh, guys, I just want to point out we're at the top of the hour. So I, I would love, uh, man, this guy, talk about how we started, how to be unapologetically you. Now we're talking about spaceships coming out of the sky. I mean, like we, we've made some headway in an hour here. Um, Landon, any, any final thoughts? All of the stuff that we're talking about is all accessible to all of us. And it starts with all of us being unapologetically who the fuck we are, mm -hmm. right? The only way to be truly selfless is to be selfish because it has to start with you. If your cup's not full, you can't fill anybody else's up. If you're not taken care of, you can't take care of anybody else effectively. And the way to do all of that is to understand what it is that you are, which is what you decide that you are mm. and be okay with that and then love that mm. forget about what everybody else thinks just do you yeah so good so so good that's why he's the sales master guys <laughs> it's it's interesting that whole shtick is just the conduit that i can put my own brand of personal development through which is really all about be who you are yeah man well, before we got on this call, you were, you were smoking the pipe and I said, I don't know if to tell you you're the most badass person in the world or to smack it out of your hand because it's unhealthy. And you're like, well, it's not a big deal when you're infinite. You live forever. When you're immortal. immortal. When you're immortal, right? So I heard like infinite live forever. Um, you know, what an interesting thing though, when you're doing your work here on this planet, if you could take that immortality point of view and say, hey, I got all the time in the world. Time is a linear process. We don't even understand time. We have no idea what it is. It's, it's some connection like gravity. We don't quite understand it. We describe around it. But if you just knew, it's like, this is the essence of my soul. It embodies itself in different ways to have this essence show up here in this 
time. But because of that, it's like, I can be patient. What am I, what am I in a rush for? This is the blink of an eye from the right perspective that's happening right now. This conversation is a, a blip of the blip of the blip, right? And it's funny, like the perspective will give you so much appreciation for it, it'll take all the meaning out of it. The point is, it's like, I, I truly feel I'm like, I know I've been stabbed before. I know I've been killed before, but every reading I've ever gotten about past lives, things I've, I've personally felt into, seen in my experience, I'm like, my soul's always there doing this thing, being this thing. So it's like, all right, shoot me in the face. Fucker, I'm coming back in 20 years. What's 20 years from now? You know, like I'll, I'll be right back. If my soul's supposed to be here, it'll be here doing the good work. And I think that that gives you this like, feeling like ah, i'm not really in a rush for anything and it would be nice if this happened and uh, yeah so like again i'll go and come back to patience and grace like just just having that patience and grace with everything that you do everything that you be everything that you're experiencing if you do i think you're going to see a lot of really beautiful things happening for you yeah i, I just love it and, and landed to your point you know so landon if you guys haven't heard the previous podcast you should definitely go back and listen so uh, he runs uh, the sales gorilla and they're amazing, like teaches amazing sales tactics for people who don't want to be salesy cheese balls. Um, and I just find it so awesome that like the key to that is exactly what we spoke about here. <laughs> because the more you are that, the more people just want to come to you and like give you money. <laughs> yep. so the right cool. people for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The right people for you. And it's so good. Um, yeah, guys, just thank you, Landon. Thanks for being here. Awesome thanks questions. Awesome conversation as always. You know, what occurred to me is like guys literally sitting in a coffee shop in San Diego talking about fucking aliens and, and this and that. And just like, we're talking about unapologetically you. He's like literally out in public having this conversation with literally nothing about it. And I just find that to be so beautiful. Like such an example of this. I've, I've had people walk up to me because of that later on and be like, you're really passionate about something. Are you a coach or something? And we start the conversation. Like, I, I, I don't care if it sounds weird. You, then you're just not ready for that message. And for somebody around here, who knows, it might've resonated. And they're like, holy shit, that's exactly what I've been looking for. You know, this is what we get to be. We get to be that thing that stands up and says, hey, look, I, I'm experiencing something. And I invite you to at least investigate what that is for yourself. Yeah. That's and, and just, just my, my two cents as we wrap up is, you know, we, we've spoken a lot about a lot of different things. If something resonated with you at like a deep soul level, my uh, coaching would be to create one micro, I'm not talking like some massive, like build, go hike a mountain, one micro action that would help you move that, that, that feeling forward because otherwise you're going to leave this podcast and go, wow, that was really smart. And like, Oh, I have a lot to think about. And it's going to make absolutely zero difference in your life. If you heard something about, you know, trying something new with your kids, trying something new at work, trying something new with yourself, with your body, et cetera, like just write down one thing, one little, little thing that you want to take as a practice because those are the things that are going to make the biggest difference for you. Otherwise, this will be just a bunch of good information that you will have done nothing. With. Landon, remind them one more time how they can find you and where you're at if they want to connect with you. Sure. I run a Facebook group called Getting Clients Without Being Salesy. And uh, it is about sales marketing done the right way to get you your perfect for you clients. But it's all about mindset. So if you dug this and you're looking for that, come hang out. Yeah. And it's an awesome group, like truly, truly awesome, engaged group. So if you have an opportunity, do it. Um, Landon, as always, just such a pleasure to be in your space, man. So glad we got to do this. Really? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We will do it again, I'm sure. And uh, for everyone else, thank you for being here. Hope you dug this. Give it a like or a thumbs up, comment, review it. And uh, we'll see you on the next podcast. Have an amazing day, everyone.